Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this pet photo ornament. We're going to use the Xtool Creative Space software to create the file, and then I'll use Xtool's M1 10 watt laser diode to cut it out, and then I'll show you how to put it together. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have Xtools Creative Space open, and that's the software that I'll be using to design the ornament today. Now this is an ornament that will hold a photograph, so it's going to be three separate pieces. So this is a bit more involved, but it's not difficult, just follow along. So let's go ahead and get started by drawing the circles. So if I go up to Insert, click on the circle, hold down my Shift key, draw my first circle, and then I'm working in inches and I'm going to change that to four inches. So make sure that your width and your height say four inches. Then I'm going to change this to red. Then I'm going to do a copy paste and I'm going to change this one to 2.5 inches. And this will be the inner part that's going to be where the photo will show through. So I'm going to change this to yellow then I'm going to select both of these items and align it horizontal and vertical. So that's the basic part of the ornament. So I'm just going to place that just right there. Next, what I'm going to do is draw the hoops or the hoop that we'll use to hang the ornament. So I'll go back to circle, draw the circle, and I'm going to make this red. Red for me indicates cutting. That's why I like to keep my uh, layer colors organized. And I'm going to change this to one inch. Now this is a larger hoop because I plan to put a thicker ribbon through it, but you can change the size of this if you choose to. Then the next one I'm going to do is the inner part. So again, copy paste, and you can visually size it, or in this case, I'm going to say 0.5 click OK. Then I'm going to align these both horizontal and vertical while they're both still connected or selected rather, subtracted overlap, and that becomes one piece. Then I'm going to put this up to the top. And let me bring this down to the center so you can see better how I'm putting this together. So what I'm going to do next is just visually just put it at the top where you think the center is. And you can see how I have this spaced. Basically the outer circle of the ornament is in between the, the outer and inner circle of the hanger part of it. But you want to make sure that this is perfectly centered. So select all your items, go up to align, and just choose horizontal alignment. Okay. So now I know that that's all good, but I'm not going to join anything at this point. So we've got the basic part of the ornament done. So this will be the outer part. This will be the part where the photograph goes. And this is ultimately how we're going to hang the ornament. So to make the bone part of it, we're going to go back up into the Shapes tool. And we're going to select a heart. So we'll bring this down here. I'm going to change that to red. Then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm just going to visually place it so you can see this marker here. I'm just going to leave it maybe about that. Again, we're just playing with the placement at this point. Then I'm going to do a control copy, control V go up to Reflect and say Reflect Horizontally. And then again, I'm just going to roughly place that heart just like this. I think maybe about here. Next, I'm going to draw a rectangle. So go up to Insert, choose the rectangle. I'm just going to randomly draw that. Go up to the sizing, do an Unlock. And on the width of the rectangle, it's going to be 2.25 inches by 0.75 inches. Then I'm going to lock that so that I don't mess up that spacing. 
And again, I'm just visualizing this looks kind of like a bone, uh, but I need to make sure that everything is aligned correctly. So the first thing I need to do is just select both of those hearts. So I've selected one, hold down my shift key, select the other one, go up to align and just say vertical align. So that way I know that they are centered correctly. I'm going to right click and choose group. So now these are one piece. Next, what I'm going to do is select those hearts, but also hold down my shift key. Actually, I might select the rectangle first. That'd be easier Then the shift key. So now I have all those pieces selected. I'm going to go up to align horizontal and vertical. That all looks good. I'm going to go up to combine, choose unite. And now I've got my bone selected or created rather. Now what I want to do is look at this part here, this straight line, and I'm going to bring that down to just about there. I don't want it to go past a circle. I want it to stay inside the circle. And I think that looks really good. So I'm going to select all my items, go back up to align and just choose horizontal alignment. That way I know that all of the items are centered and everything looks great. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some decorative elements to this. I want to add some score lines. So we'll begin by just clicking on the bone, go up to outline and under offset distance, I'm going to type 0 0.123. I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to select the inner part, right click and select blue. Blue for me will indicate score lines and red will be cut lines. Then I'm going to do the same thing to that inner circle. So on the yellow layer, go up to outline. Again, it will be 0 0.123. Click OK. Click on the outer one and assign blue. So now I know that that's all good. So now we've got the front part of the ornament complete. And now I can start combining things to make the back. So the first thing you need to do is click on all the red layers. Then I'm going to go up to combine and I'm going to say unite. So now we've got this one piece this red piece that is the front of the ornament. I'm going to hit control copy, control V and move this off to the side. So this will be the back portion of the ornament. Now I need to go back to the front portion of it and I need to click on the yellow layer and then the outer red layer just of the front. Go up to combine and say subtracted overlap. And then I'm going to change that back to red because that's going to be a cut layer. So the difference here will be this has the whole cut out, this doesn't because we don't need that on the back. All right, so I know that might be a bit confusing, but it will make sense when we put the ornament together. All right, so now we've got the front done, we've got the back done. Now I need to create the center part. So let me put um, this one off to the side here for a second. I'm going to make a copy of this red layer for the, from the front. So copy paste and I'll move this over. Let me move this out of the way and we'll go in. Now, what this one is going to be is the spacer. So it's going to be the hole in the top. You're going to just slide and drop your picture right in. So I don't need this whole piece. What I need to do is go up to rectangle and make sure you draw a rectangle that covers the top part of the frame. Now you do want it to extend past what would be the center part of this inner circle. So that actually looks pretty good. If you did it further up, the photo will not be able to slide in. So you need to be below the center line of that inner circle. Select both of these pieces, go up to combine and choose subtract. 
So now you have your spacer for the ornament. So how this is going to go together is there's your backing. Then you'll glue this on. And then the top part will go on top of that. But this spacer is going to leave you a space at the top so you can drop your picture in. So next I'm going to add some text to the ornament. Click on the text tool and I'm just going to paste the text in. And you can see it's a nice long string of text. So I'm going to reduce the size down to a font size of 22. Right click, change that to purple and click on engrave because I will be engraving this text onto the ornament. So then place it just roughly in the center, then look for this icon, click and hold, and now you can bend your text around that shape. So we'll do that. I'm going to change the font. I'll be using the combo font for this one. And um, you know what, I think I might increase the size to, let's try 23. See how that looks. You do have to kind of play around with this one depending on the fonts that you choose. So that looks really good. Pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to add some more decoration here to the bone. So I'm going to go back up to shapes. I'm going to select the heart again and I'm just going to reduce the size and rotate that 90 degrees. Just bring this down here. And you can choose to either cut this out or do an outline, an engrave, whatever you choose to do. I'm actually going to do a combination of both. So I'm going to do a cut. So I'll do red for that. Then I'll go to outline and I'm going to leave it at the default. Just click OK. And on the outline, I'm going to change that to blue. So that way the red part will cut out and the blue line will leave a score line. So I think that will look quite nice. Select both of those, do a copy paste and a reflect. Oops, it looks like I was too quick there. Do a horizontal reflect and I'll place that over here select them both again just so that I know everything is aligned. I don't need this part. I just need the hearts. And go up to a range. I'm sorry, go up to a line and vertical center. So those look great. So I think that looks really good. Now the last thing to do is put the name in the middle of the bone. So I'll go back up to text and I will type in Leah. And I think I'll use, um, what's this font look? Oh, this looks cute. That one looks kind of cute. Just place that in here. Oh, maybe a different one. Let's see. Let's try the different, different, some different selections. That one actually looks much better. We'll do that. And again, this one's going to be engraved. So I will assign that the purple and I'll just click on engrave so you get a better visual. So at this point, <clears throat> the ornament is pretty much complete and ready to be sent off to the laser. So let's review the parts again. So this is the front of the ornament. This is the back of the ornament and this is the spacer in between. Now you could cut these all from the same thickness of wood, for example, you could use a three millimeter basswood and that's what I'm going to do for the front and for the back. For the spacer, I do have a piece of two millimeter basswood and I'm going to use that just to reduce the thickness slightly. It's not going to make a huge difference. So if you don't have two millimeter basswood, don't freak out about it. It's, it's not a big deal, but that's what I'll be using today. So let's get the laser turned on and set up and we'll get this ornament cut out. All right, so I've got my M1 turned on and I do have the 10 watt laser diode. I've got a piece of plywood attached to the honeycomb 
and now I need to assign the parameters to each of these layers. So as I had stated earlier, I'm going to cut the spacer from a piece of 2 millimeter plywood, so I'm just going to pull this off the canvas for the moment. So if I go to my layers palette and click on the red layer, I'm going to assign cut. So I'm going to leave that at the defaults, which is a power of 100, a speed of 5, and a pass of 1. Then if I click on the blue layer, that's going to be my score settings. And I'm going to leave those at the defaults, power of 50, speed of 60, and 1 pass. And then for the purple, which will be engrave, click on my engrave settings, and I'm going to change that to 80, speed of 200, 1 pass, and then 100 lines per centimeter. And I need to do a quick auto measure because I can't remember if I did one. So let's just double check this. And there we go, that works out perfect. I am going to bring it down just a little bit. Alright, so now I'm going to send this off for cutting. So I'll click on process, hit start, push start on the machine, and we're ready to go. All right, so now that those pieces have cut, I'm going to drag those off the canvas. I've got my piece of two millimeter basswood onto the honeycomb. So I'm going to place this piece just right on here. I'm going to leave my settings at three millimeter and do the auto measure. I typically just use the defaults for this type of wood also. So auto measure was successful. I'll click on the red, go to cut, and I'll leave that at the 100% power, speed of 5, and a pass of 1. Then I'll go ahead and hit process, hit start, hit the button on the machine, and we're off to the races. <laughs> 